Amen. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Well, while they're bringing the pulpit up a little bit, we just want to thank God for this opportunity uh, that we have, we all have, to minister the gospel message. Be it through prayer, song, God has given an opportunity so that the people of Bermuda may know that he is alive and well. Amen. He's not just in a book, but he indeed lives through the people of God. Um, you can take your seat. I want to give honor to the man of God, the leader of this ministry, uh, Minister Mallow. If you will put your hands together for this gift of God, we thank God for the vision uh, that he has for this ministry. And certainly this afternoon to everyone who has prayed, sang, uh, given in poetry, I honor you and bless God for your gifts. And at this time, I am going to, I wasn't going to pray, but I better pray. Better do what I always do. And then I'll go into the word of God. Uh, just a brief message that he has given us today. So also those at Shekinah, thank you for supporting all the regulars. So let's pray. Father, we do thank you. Thank you for this day, this opportunity that you've given to us to speak forth your word. God, we know that your word is already settled in heaven. And now, God, we pray that you will settle it here, right on the earth, in the island of Bermuda. God, we thank you for your word. Bless it to our hearing and our doing and our being. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone says, Amen, amen. So just before I go into the word, God spoke something interesting to me probably about 45 minutes ago. God said to me, sinners don't have any problem being a sinner. Christians do have a problem being Christians. That's why the word says that the harvest is ripe. The laborers are few. And I believe with the message that God has given us, it's going to allow the Christian warrior, the Christian soldier, to sharpen their swords in order that we can win the lost souls to the kingdom of heaven. And so with that in mind, I'm going to go into the word of God, reading from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, NIV. Here beginneth the reading of God's word. It says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the soul loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The word of the Lord for the people of God. And so I want to speak for a little bit on the topic, the time for salt and light is now. The time for salt and light is now. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ left his disciples with one message. And this message was to share his word, his message to the world. It is the Great Commission. It is certainly great as God has placed upon us a weight of heaven to proclaim his gospel and reclaim the sinner, reclaim the lost soul. I don't know about you, but every day I drive up and down Bermuda, if, it, if I'm in my home and I'm on the computer, look at what is posted on Facebook. I, I tell you what, we have a world full of sinners. We have a world that we know that we need to reach the sinner man, reach the sinner woman. And if you are a child of God, if you are a Christian, I need to let you know that your only mission, your real job is to represent the kingdom of heaven and bring the lost souls in. I need my brother, my sister, my 
my nieces, my nephews. I need them to come into the kingdom. I don't know about you, but I don't need to be separated eternally from them. If you have a loved one and they're not saved yet, don't you want them saved? Amen. Don't you want them to come into the kingdom? Glory to God. And this is why the time to be sold and the time to be light is right now. Christians, they have to separate themselves from the things of the world. <laughs> Choose daily to walk in the holiness of the kingdom. Now why do I say that? Because that's been spoken already by Minister Mallow. We have Christians that are having a hard time separating themselves. We have Christians that are challenged, especially between the months of May and October, the party months, the, the t you know, tents outside, beach, you know, wine coolers, and uh, the devil is a liar. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, they're challenged. And what this does is it places a mark against the child of God because you can't tell them that they need to come out of the world if you're doing what the world is doing. We've got to present a clear message, a line of demarcation that we are different because we are salt and we are light. The child of God is salt and the child of God is light. How will you and I be effective in this great work, the Great Commission? How will you and I not fail in this great kingdom work? It's time for the Christian to make as their first priority their Christian duty to actually be sold and light. Now let me help you out just in case there is some confusion. You are not sold. You are not light if you go into a church building. No, 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 the sinner man can walk in the house of God and the sinner woman can walk into the church building. And so it's not about the building, it's about are you the temple, which means everywhere you take the building, are you soul and are you light? And so again, it's that time and the time is now. Bermuda needs soul and Bermuda needs light. The word of God is clear that there is a function, an act of faith that disciples of Jesus Christ are capable of. Now, people of God, this unsavory world, a world that's bitter, a world that's full of hate, with a desire to do that which God is not pleased with, this world needs salt and light. Now, let me talk about salt. The original word or the Greek word is halos. Let me tell you about salt. That rich food is seasoned with and sacrifices are sprinkled. So I need to ask somebody, have you been seasoned? Did, can you walk into a room and those that were Speaking profanity, those that were talking about things that are ungodly, when the soul steps in, the atmosphere shifts. It said that soul was sprinkled on sacrifice because the sacrifice had to be as fresh as possible before it was lifted up. And I need to know are you a salty Christian? Are you a Christian sprinkled with soul so that you can be, uh, oh come on, a living sacrifice. Amen, amen. What have you sacrificed lately? What have you been challenged to give up lately? What have you been challenged that you've got to be different because the world does that, but you're a Christian. Well, what do you do? Talking about soul, what else about soul? I, I, I studied it and said that it's those kinds of saline, which means it's a bit acidic, saline matter, watch this now, used to fertilize arable land. Can we talk about it? Oh, we, I heard from Somerset to St. George's, I heard from, from, from Dockyard to, to St. David's. That tells me that we've got arable land, that means open space. 
And we've got to take the gospel message to the arable land, to every open space, that wherever God gives you permission to walk, you can say, I'm the soul walking on the arable land. And God, I don't know what you're going to do with this land. I, I don't know what you're going to plant in this land. But God, as I walk as the soul on this arable land, arable meaning that it shall bring forth and it's able to bring forth. That's how you know that you've been called. That's how you know that you have a faith walk. Because, listen, it's more than being a human being with blood and nerves. No, you've got to have a bloody testimony and the nerve to speak the gospel message of Jesus Christ. That whether they cheer or they despair, that you will speak what thus said the Lord. And that like you will know in, in Zechariah 4 and 6, it's, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, said the Lord. You got to be sold. I got another thing to tell you about sold. Sold is a symbol of lasting concord because it protects food from putrefaction and it preserves it unchanged. Lord have mercy. Oh, I wish we had some salty Christians that, that, that as passionate as they were about the gospel message 10 years ago because they're being preserved that because they're not, they're not stinking. There's no putrefaction. Uh, that, that there's no decomposition. But the same, the same way they love God when they first met Him, the same way they felt about God's presence uh, when they first were in the house, uh, they're still as salty. They're still as fresh. Uh, they still have a testimony. Uh, huh? How many of you used to dance and you're still doing the holy dance? You used to shout and you're still shouting. That's when you know that you're salt and you're still salty. Another thing, last thing about salt, look at it. <laughs> salt is the wisdom and grace exhibited in speech. In speech. They won't always want your salty speech. But you've got to know how at a family gathering, how at the family picnic, to pick your time. Pick your time at the picnic when you can add your salty conversation. How? Huh? When you can pull things in like a child of God ought to. Oh, I can testify. I remember that. We were at a family picnic some four years ago on the June 16th holiday. And while I'm a Christian, I, I, my sister and my nieces, they're, they're not Christian yet. And they came and they opened up that cooler. Now two things are going to happen. Well, you know what was in the cooler. Come in with stuff. I don't have a problem. I know how to go home. My car knows how to go to Warwick. But I'm going to tell you what. This salt will not be disgraced. I, 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 you know, one year they say, okay, auntie. The next year they want to push it. I said, all right. Enjoy the rest of your holiday. Wonderful. I'll see you all later. And let me tell you, it don't take me two seconds to get back home and just thank God that I'm sold. Listen, I have to be wise. We have to be wise. Sometimes we can't preach right there at the whole family. You just need to excuse yourself. Why? Because I'm arable land. And your drink and your alcohol and your spirit and your conversation going to mess up my land. So I'm taking my land home. What am I saying? You've got to be sold. you got to be sold. You can't let them change you. And thank God they... Well, yet, let me say, they were respectful as I went. The Bible says, I want you to be salt and light. Now, light comes from the word fuss. And it means, or some attributes are, emitted by a lamp. Emitted by a lamp. 
You're not the light source. You are the lamp bringing forth light. I can't shine of myself. I didn't make that sun shine. I'm certainly being impacted upon by it. Huh? So, so as lights of the world, it's not your light. It's not your world. It's my father's world. And he's called us to be as he is, lights in his world. We got to emit, shine forth, be different. It says light is a heavenly light such as surrounds angels when they appear on earth. Oh, come on, the Christmas story. And they're shining a light. The sinner man, the sinner woman needs to know that there are Christians who are willing to shine forth their light. Too much darkness in Bermuda. Too much devastation. Families being torn apart. Drugs killing our men and women. Drugs destroying the lives of our school students. I'm telling you, it's because we're not speaking for the light. But as the light of the world, we're going to speak for the light of the world. Jesus Christ. If you want your life to change, you're going to need the light. If you want to be different, different than you were last year, different than you were last month, then I invite you, you've got to invite in the light of the world. And his name is Jesus. Jesus. That's right. It also says of light, a star, fire, because it is light, it sheds light. Brightness, brightness. Every child of God ought to add some brightness to a situation. Go ahead, go ahead. Don't enter into a situation and make it worse. Make it dark. Don't join the darkness. Show the darkness that you are the light. Now, let me say this. We've gotten to the point, to the place now, where we want to keep the peace. Where we want to keep the peace, so you're not going to say anything. You don't understand, but that by keeping the peace, that you X out the Prince of Peace. We've been called into the world because the world needs our peace. Prince of peace. What the world is missing, they can find in Jesus Christ. What the world needs now, oh yes, it's love. Real love. We got a demonic spirit going across this island talking about true love wins. I'm going to be doing some teaching in September, September coming up. Because I'm going to tell you about true love. Because what they're talking about is a counterfeit love. A love that is of the devil. And the reason that they're able to speak so loudly and get one magistrate justice to change his mind is because the church has become silent. Oh, the man of the church, pastors and preachers, afraid to stand up and tell it like it is. Well, that means you've lost your saltiness. And the Bible says that when you lose your saltiness, you're good for nothing but to be trodden underfoot by man. And I'm going to tell you something in case you don't know. Ain't no man going to walk on me. Ain't no person going to walk on me. God has given me authority. I'm going to stand on the neck of the enemy. I'm going to crush him under my feet. I will not become so less and lose my ability to speak for it. Listen, every time the church is silent, we just gave the devil amplification of his story. I don't know, but I feel like having a church moment right here. If you have determined, Pastor, I'm going to stand up. They don't want me to stand. They don't want to hear my voice, but I'm going to stand anyway. Why don't you stand for three seconds and just say, I will stand. Yeah, I will stand. 
Glory, glory, glory. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. You can take your seat. In verse 13, it talks about the soul being the soul of the earth. But if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? How can it be made salty again? In other words, when the church mixes so much with the world, the sugar of the world, sugar of the world, you bake something and put salt and sugar in it, you end up grinding away. It's not that the salt isn't salt, but now it's lost its original purpose because it's joined with sugar. And the church has lost her original authority. Come ye out from among them. Be ye separate and shine forth as lights. That's what we've got to do. We've got to shine forth as lights. The soul here, it can become tasteless. If you, listen, how can you be the soul if you drink with them? Next weekend, if you soak her with them. I, I know we're black, we can't help a beat, but I said if you soak her with them. Huh? Tell me those outfits cost anywhere from $600 to $1,200. But then we're going to raise money for some of those parents to buy their children's school clothes. Yeah, don't come to me. No. No. Come on now. If we keep on spoiling them, if we keep on saying, yes, you can spend money on alcohol, spend money on weed, spend money on weave, spend money on whatever, but you don't have $300 to buy your child. Come on, this is not right. We've got to speak out against these things. And if we party with them, smoke with them, how can you be sold to them? How can you be the difference that they need to see so that they may just be drawn out of darkness into the marvelous light? You cannot become tasteless. You must not lose that which preserves you. If Jesus saved your life, don't, don't lose Jesus. Don't put down your salvation. Don't want to lose a good thing, Sister Tammy. Amen, amen. He's not only a good thing, he's the best thing. Amen. The best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah. I know about you, but one day I was lost. I was undone. I was without God or his son. But God reached down his hand and he saved my soul. And he made me whole. And I got some news for you. He's still making me whole. That when I'm going through what I'm going through, I can still call on the mighty name of Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Forever. He doesn't change. We've got to preserve. We want to be preserved so that we can serve. You cannot become an illegal servant in the kingdom. The moment that you as a kingdom citizen do that which is displeasing in God's sight, you make a mockery out of salvation. And it's time for the church to separate herself. As sold, you don't want to decay. And you don't want others to think that because you're not living up to the word, that Jesus Christ is not real. Let me tell you something. The world is always waiting for the church to fall. The world is always waiting for a minister, for a reverend, for an evangelist, for an apostle, for a prophet to fall. You think they're not watching you? Yes, they are. Because you are, watch this, an irritant to their wounds. You ever had a wound? You gonna put salt in it. But look, 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 look. It'll sting. But it'll heal. It'll clean. It'll clean it up. Lord have mercy. 
weak and we stop because we don't want to hurt nobody. But let me tell you something. The soul must be applied to the sin-sick wound so that they can feel a difference. And when that pain wears off, they can be the difference. That they now can represent the kingdom of heaven. We've got to be salt and we've got to be light. We've got to represent Jesus Christ. Then it says we're going to be a city. City on a hill. They should look up to you. Huh? Those who are bent over with burden, stressed out with circumstances, weary of whatever they're going through, they should be able to, come on now, lift up your hands. Oh, you gates. And the king of glory. The king. Do you know when we say the king of glory, we're saying God heaven and the light of heaven the shekinah the shekna of heaven your very presence the glory you are i need to show up in this situation and they're going through it should be your glorious light your glorious testimony your glorious singing oh lord because really there ought not be anything such as a grumpy christian. not a grumpy christian not a grumpy Christian. What you mean he said you made you whole? Put a running in your feet, uh, clapping in your hands. You ought to be happy about that. Oh, yeah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, yes, it is. And this is what the sinner man, the sinner woman must see. So you're that city on the hill. That when they're going through, they can look up. And see sister so and so, brother so and so, that they're still worshiping that man named Jesus. That man from Galilee. The man that called people out of their jobs and said, Follow me. And all he wants to do is let the people of Bermuda know that his mission has not changed. He's still calling men, women, boys and girls huh, to drop their nets drop their nets of confusion huh, drop their nets of bigotry huh, drop their nets of bitterness huh, drop whatever they need to and follow after Jesus Christ huh, because Jesus is the answer for the world today huh, above him there's no other for Jesus is the way I'm almost done you are not, you're not shining forth of your own accord. We are not shining forth because we simply want to. We're shining forth because Jesus hung, bled, and died and took away our sins. And ever since that day, our lives have never been the same. Ever since that day, we know that we're never alone. And let me speak to something. We come against every demonic spirit of suicide. Yes. Demonic spirit of depression. Yes. Because if you're wrapped up, tied up in Jesus, ain't no suicide demon can enter into your dwelling place. Oh no, because God gives you authority. Because he said, I, look, look, while the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, I have come that you might have life and have life more abundantly. So if anybody is depressed, anybody feeling like they don't know what to do, I need to introduce you to a man named Jesus. For he'll do for you what no other can do. And so because Jesus hung, bled, and died, went on a hill called Calvary, we now go on a hill and shine forth as a city on the hill. We must not fear. The child of God must not hide their light. I don't care if the person is a millionaire coming against the child of God. I don't care if the LGBT community, X, Y, Z, whatever. You stand on the word of God. You stand with authority. And let me say this, that if you are under a shepherd and they can't stand up for God's marriage, you are under a shepherd who is leading people to hell. 
because that is a hellish deed. That's the boldness that's needed in Bermuda. God's word is right. God's word is yes. That before God created anything called a church, before there was any type of religion, before there was any type of anything, he joined together one man and one woman before any confusion started. Ain't about the church. Ain't about the church. Because if, if this, listen, listen, if this thing was about a church, this church believes this. This church, this religion believes this. This religion, ain't about no religion, no church. It's about God. And God said to Adam, I'm bringing you your match. I'm bringing you the one I made for you. That's where we've got to get bold. Stop being scared. Stop being silent on it. Because listen, get this. I just heard Holy Ghost just said this. If you deny me, before man, I'll deny you before God. You think every preacher gonna be in heaven? Did you deny the word? Did you deny God? When I gave you an opportunity in Bermuda for the last three years to speak God's word, did you go and hide? Did you go and have meetings? You gotta shine for it. And we want the sinner man to come in. Come in to what? The church has got to be the church. We've got to be salt and we've got to be light. Let's represent Jesus. Time is running out. These days right here are the last days. Time is running out. There are literally days I feel like Noah building a ship building an ark and crying and hoping somebody hears. Hoping somebody hears. You read the story of Noah, you're like, how could they not believe? But by the time they started seeing the raindrops, started banging on the door, it was too late. They were eternally lost. And we've got to get serious. Do we want people lost and going to hell? Because the church was silent. The days of Noah. So shall it be before the return of Jesus Christ. Partying and doing things that are not of the kingdom of heaven. I want heaven for as many as the Lord our God shall call. I want heaven for everyone. I learned recently last year or so it's really messed me up i i knew the scripture but i didn't want to accept the reality of it and that's that not everybody is destined for heaven as much as i want my brother my sister my nieces my friends to make it into heaven the bible tells me not everybody will Many will deny the voice of the church. Amen, Call us everything except the child of God. I want people to go to heaven. Amen. And God saying, but they won't. You, aren't you? Aren't the preachers? There are preachers preaching my word in Bermuda. Training, talking to God's people, preaching. And church people disobey. How much more sinners? But let me tell you something, church. We cannot stop preaching. We don't know who has been called to make it into the kingdom. We have no right to stop. Your voice could be the voice that wins somebody in. Your testimony, your song, your poem, your prayers, your worship. So up and down this island. One way or the other, on your job. I can't be everywhere at, at every time. Neither can you. Take your testimony. Show them Jesus. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there's no other. Jesus is the way. So my prayer this afternoon is that with every car going by, that that word, that name given 
under heaven whereby you must be saved. The name of Jesus. You will never have Jesus be equal with Buddha. The name of Jesus can never be equal with another name. And our young people, I go to schools, we're losing them to all sorts of witchcraft religion. And the church needs to wake up. Got people bringing yoga, what do they call it, yoga, teaching the children how to sit. Saw it last week in the assembly. You better wake up, church. Let your voice rise up. Teaching them to open up their spirits to a spirit that's not of God. That's why I ended here by saying, it is time to be salt and light now. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now.